This is part 18 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss HTTP service in Angular. In Angular, there are several built-in services. $HTTP service is one of them. In this video, we'll discuss another built-in service, $log. It's also possible to create our own custom services in Angular. At this point, several questions come to our mind. What are services in Angular? When should we be creating services in Angular? How to create our own custom Angular services? Where do these services fit in an Angular application architecture? What are the benefits of using services? I will answer all these questions in a later video. The reason for postponing this discussion is that it is easier to understand the concept of Angular services and the benefits they provide once we understand how to use one or two built-in Angular services. So let's start our discussion with the HTTP service. The HTTP service is used to make HTTP requests to a remote server. In fact, we looked at an example of how to do that in our previous video session. HTTP service is a function that has a single input parameter, that is, a configuration object. In this example right here, we are issuing a GET request to this URL, employeeservice.asmx forward slash get all employees. Now, if you look at this configuration object right here, we're only using two properties of it. But this object has got several properties, and for the complete list of properties, please visit this URL right here. So on this page, you can see the list of all properties supported by the configuration object. At the moment, we're only using these two properties, method and URL. As we move along in this course, we'll discuss how to use these other properties. Now, if you recollect the example that we worked with in the previous video session, notice here we're using the get shortcut method of the HTTP service. Instead of using this get shortcut method, we can use this HTTP service as a function. When we do that, we have to pass it the configuration object. So I'm going to open the parenthesis here and close it right here. So we have an object there. And when we use the object, we have to specify at least two properties the method that we want to use to issue that request. So we want to issue a GET request. And this is the URL to which we want to issue that GET request. Let's save our changes. And when we reload this page, it should continue to work exactly the same way as before. Shortcut methods like get, post, put, delete, etc. are also available to be used with the HTTP service. We discussed an example of how to do that using the shortcut method get in our previous video. The HTTP service returns a promise object. This means the functions are executed asynchronously and the data that these functions return may not be available immediately. Because of this reason, you cannot use the return value of the HTTP service as shown right here. Notice here, we are assigning the return value of the HTTP service to this employee's property on the scope. We cannot do this right away like that. That's because the HTTP returns a promise object. So instead, we use the then method. So in this example, notice that we have chained the then method with this get method. And to this then method, we are passing an anonymous function as a parameter. So this is called the success callback function. This is the function that is called when the request completes successfully. So when the request is completed successfully, we get a response from the server that's passed to the success callback function. And this response object has got several properties. And among those several properties, data is one of them, which we use to retrieve the data. So we are retrieving the data and then assigning that to the employee's property on the dollar scope object, which is then available in the view. Now, to inspect all the properties of this response object, we can use another built-in Angular service, which is log. This log service has got info method, which we can use. And once we pass to that info method, the response object, it's going to log that object to the console. And then we can use the developer tools of the browser vendor and then see what are the different properties and what information they contain. Let's actually look at an example of doing that right now. So just like how we have injected the HTTP service to this function, I'm going to inject the log service. And then within this success callback function, we can use that log service provided by Angular. It has got the info function. And to this function, I'm going to pass the response object. Let's save our changes. 
and when we reload this page and when we launch the developer tools the response object should have been logged to the console vendor so we are on the console vendor at the moment notice that we have got an object here and this object has got several properties the first property here is the config object the config object you know that we have used along with the HTTP service. Remember we have specified two properties method, the method was get that we used and this is the URL to which we want to issue the get request. So the config object contains the information about the request object and we also have the data property. The data property contains the data that the web service has returned. We got an array of employee objects. So we have got an array here with five objects within it and each object should have the properties that we see here ID, name, gender, salary and it also has got the headers information status and status text so another very useful service to log the objects to the console very useful especially when you're debugging angular applications if there is an error processing the request the error callback function is called if you look at you know the then function here at the moment we are only passing one anonymous function as a parameter which is the success callback function in addition to the success callback function we can also pass another parameter that is another anonymous function which is the error callback function that is the function that will be called when there is an error processing request so let's actually pass another anonymous function and what we are going to get back is a reason object so this is the anonymous function that is called if there is an error processing the request and let's say we want to display that error message to the user so to this scoop object I'm going to attach another property dot error and again this reason object has got um, several properties and if you want to see all the properties again you can log it to the console just like how we have logged the response object so this reason object again has got the data property which contains the information about the error so we are storing that within the error property of the scope object which is available within the view so what I'm going to do is just about this table within the view I'm going to use that error property and display the error message let's include two HTML break elements so there is some space between the table and the error message alright now let's also log the error object to the console so I'm going to use the log service and use the info method and then pass the reason object alright so let's save all these changes and let's make this web service fail uh, deliberately so I'm going to remove s from the name of the method okay so let's reload this and see what what we're going to get look at that uh, for some reason we see the data binding expression instead of the actual error message let's see why is that that means there's something wrong look at that that's because we have a compilation error here so let's fix that and let's reload that and look at that we see the error message invalid operation exception get all employee web service method is not valid okay and that's right and look at that you know we have the internal service and there is an object logged and again this object has got several properties you know just like the response object that we got config data header status and status text now you can also create separate functions and associate them as success callback and error callback functions now if you look at what we are doing here we are passing these anonymous functions you know as parameter values to this then function instead of that what we can do is create these functions separately so we can do something like this so we are creating first a success callback function and then an error callback function and then we are using those functions as values um, for the then method let's actually look at that in action so what I can do is within our controller let's create a variable let's call this success callback equals that's going to be a function actually let's cut that from there and paste it right here and let's remove this logging from there similarly I'm going to create an error, error callback function and what we want to do actually 
$scope.data employees is the property equals response.data and error callback what we want to do $scope.error equals again response.data alright so now we have two functions here so I can use these functions as the values for the then method so success callback and error callback alright so let's save the changes and let's fix that error that we have so let's put that right get all employees now it should work without any error look at that we get the employees data now out of the box the angular HTTP provides two default transformations if the data property of the request configuration object contains a JavaScript object in fact here it's a JavaScript object that we are passing to our web server okay so if it contains a JavaScript object it's automatically converted into a JSON object we got that transformation out of the box without having to write any line of code Similarly, if JSON response is detected from the web server, it's automatically converted into a JavaScript object. So, out of the box, you know, these two default transformations are provided by Angular. Thank you for listening and have a great day.